Hello and welcome to the Bramble Patch tutorial. My name is Wendy and today we've got Alicia on technicals, so she'll be assisting uh, with past equipment. Um, today we're going to make a drawstring bag, which is this one, and they're really quite handy. They can be used for uh, toiletries, sewing equipment, crafts, um, children's slipper bags, or you can make Christmas sacks out of them as well if you make larger ones. So let's get going and see how we make it. So to start off with, um, all you need are two fat quarters. Um, if you subscribe to Bramble Patch emails, uh, within the next couple of days, um, a free pattern will come out to you. Um, if you'd like to buy a kit, there will be a kit made up with the patterns printed out included in it. So um, first of all, you need two fat quarters. And all you're going to do is actually fold them in half, um, making sure that the orientation of the fabric, if you've got a pattern on it, is running uh, down the length of it, okay? So I'm folding the fat quarter in half, right sides together, okay? And I'm doing exactly the same with the lining fabric as well. And I'm going to give it a press, okay? And I'm going to lay the other fabric on top of it because what I want to do is actually cut all the fabrics together to make sure they're exactly the same size, which means the lining is going to fit the bag perfectly. So I'm just going to lay that on top and give it a press. There we go. And we are ready to cut. So I'm just going to turn my cutting board over. I find these boards really, really handy actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up um, the edge of the fabric so it's actually parallel with the line on the cutting board. Uh, and I'm going to use the line on the cutting board to lay my ruler. So if I lay this directly on, I'm using this 17 and a half inch this side, and it comes straight across. But as I lay it on these two markings, I'm also making sure that I've got it level at the edge as well, okay? And all I'm going to do is just cut straight across, okay? I'm then going to spin this around, so I don't disturb the fabric at all, and it's all staying clinging together because where I've pressed it, it's actually sitting nicely. All I'm going to do now is once again, I'm actually going to trim straight the way across. So, okay. Turning the board round again now, I'm actually going to do the sides. So I want the width of the bag to be 10 and a half inches. That's what I'm cutting it to be. That way we can get it out of two fat quarters. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the ruler on the fabric and I'm going to align some of the um, lines on my ruler along the bottom edge to make sure I get a good 90 degree angle on the corner. So it's nice and neat. And I'm just gonna count across one, two. Perfect, okay. So here we go. So I'm just going to trim that off now. It's one edge. Spin my mat around. If I was doing something smaller, I'd use my rotating cutting mat, but this is too large for that. And all I'm going to do now is just trim down, making sure I've got this aligned. Perfect. Okay, so you can make these bags any size you want to. So just double check that the orientation of the fabric is in the right way. So my flowers are growing upwards which is how I want it to be. So all I'm going to do now, the floral fabric that I've got here is going to be the fabric of the outer bag, okay? So that's why I layer it on top. 
and this is going to be the lining. So all I do need to do now is make a couple of markings on it so I can actually mark where the channel is going to be ready for the cord or the ribbon to be threaded through. Thank you. So I'm going to move that just so that you can see on the camera properly. I'm going to lay the two inch line at the top of the work here, all across here. And I'm going to make a mark two inches down from the top on one side and the other. You don't need to draw all the way across. I'm actually using um, just a biro so that you can see it. You would only need to use just a fabric marker, okay? And I'm going to make two more marks now. And the next mark is going to be three quarters of an inch down from this one. This will allow, this will make the channel um, that we're going to put the ribbon through. So therefore, the next marking is two and three quarter inches from the top. So I'll just make a second mark here. So that you can see here uh, and here that this is the area you do not sew between. So the next thing to do now, just on the outer fabrics, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam from here, down to here. You don't sew in this one and then you're continually sewing all the way down and exactly the same on the other side as well. When you've done that to the outer fabric, the lining fabric, you will sew from the top all the way down to the bottom uh, with a quarter of an inch seam, okay? So, I've already done that, so we'll just set that aside. And I have those here. So this one is the outer fabric, okay? And uh, you can see here is the gap where the, uh, that I've left open between the three quarters of an inch, okay? All you need to do then, whoops, is just separate the fabric and just roll it over and press that seam open, okay? Just like so. And the same to the other side as well. Just give it a nice little press, okay? You'll do exactly the same with the lining fabric. And when you've pressed this seam open, instead of keeping the seams to the side, you're actually going to have them in the center. And the reason that we do this is to make sure that we don't have too much bulk towards the edge of the bag. It helps eliminate it. Okay. So once you press this open, what you need to do now is actually turn this bag through like so. So you've got the outside uh, of the lining fabric facing you. And then what you're going to go do, you're going to feed this into the uh, outer bag. Okay. Just like so. So once we put that inside, we've actually got the right sides of the fabric facing each other, okay? And the seam for the lining is going to place, be placed centrally inside that bag, like so. So now what we need to do is stitch all the way around the top of here. I'm just going to move the iron. Thank you. Yeah. 
so I'll just make sure that this is central because I think it moved slightly when I picked it up. Just going to move that centrally inside the bag. There we go. Okay. So what we want to do now is sew around the top. So make sure you use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay. But don't use it, don't keep the table on your sewing machine. It's best to remove the table, the extension table, and actually feed this onto the machine like so. Okay. Now, if you struggle with um, getting what we call the spaghetti or bird's nest going on when you actually start sewing, the best thing to do is use a scrap piece of fabric, which we call a donkey. It's called a donkey because it carries your thread. It's also called a thread saver. Uh, it's going to save you probably 10, 12 inches of thread every time you start or stop sewing, okay? So to use that, all you need to do is just pop a scrap of fabric and use it double, otherwise it will pull it through, and just literally, sew onto it okay once you've sewn onto it you can just pull it through just about half an inch and then start sewing on your project that way you've had a test run on your sewing you know that it's running properly and you're not going to waste any thread at all all right so we're just going to actually quickly sew all the way around Obviously, when you do this, make sure when you're, you're sewing these two together, you're sewing the top of the bag and not the bottom. So the three quarter of an inch gaps need to be close to the top up here and not down here. Okay. And it just feeds around really nicely. Just taking off the donkey. And that takes us around perfectly to where we started. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to pull the lining through so we've got both the wrong sides of fabric facing us, like so. And what we need to do now is to press this seam open here, okay? This iron is so practical because I can just put it down and forget about it. And if I happen to leave it switched on, it'll just switch itself up off after about eight minutes. Um, it's just so good. I've got one at home as well. So we just press that seam open all the way around. And the reason we do this is because we want it to be, have a nice flat edge to the top. We don't want it to roll. And this just helps encourage it to actually do exactly that. Okay, so just press that like so. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to pull the outer uh, fabric of the bag over the lining so that we can see what's going on here. Okay. There we go. And already I can actually feel that this top edge is actually quite flat already. It starts to help eliminate the bulk on it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm now going to press this once again, making sure that I haven't got any of the outer, uh, the inner lining actually rolling over the edge. So I'm just going to give that a nice little press all the way around. Like so.
and it just it just rolls and folds really nicely because it's already been pressed it's just been trained to sit the knife the right way to be honest with you okay there we go that's gone round lovely okay so that is now the top of the bag okay so what we need to do now we need to top stitch around the bag okay you can use a quarter of an inch stitch uh, you can use what depth you like um, I have done them with a quarter of an inch I've also done them with a narrower one and I actually quite like the scant um, quarter of an inch because it just gives it a little bit more structure okay so I've actually got one that I've already started which is here and as you can see I've already top stitched here all the way and this has got a very scant one and this was done exactly the same way uh, by just feeding it over the arm okay so what we need to do now we need to do the stitching for the channel so um, you can use, if you have a foot like this, with the bar on to do the measuring, if you can see this bar, okay, this can actually measure the width of the uh, sew lines that you do. But you don't have to worry, if you don't have a foot that has one of these guides, then it can be done in a very, very simple way with practically any machine. All you need is an elastic band, okay? So all I'm going to do, I'm going to feed this elastic band over this arm here, and I've done a colored one, so hopefully that you can see that, okay? Now, what we need to do now is we need to stitch a row of stitching from the top of the uh, opening all the way around, and then we need to stitch a row all the way around the bottom of the opening, the three quarters of an inch opening. I've already stitched the top and the first row, so I'm going to stitch the bottom row now to form um, the channel that the ribbon needs to be passed through. So all I need to do is just feed that onto the sewing machine, and I've popped a pin just in the area at the bottom of the three quarter of an inch opening. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put my needle down in there. Now, because of, you know, some people do not have the fancy feet, I'm actually going to do it using the rubber band. So, because I've now positioned at the area that I need to stitch all the way around the bag, all I need to do is pull the bag down here and move the elastic band to the top of that area. So now when I put my foot down and start sewing, I just keep my eye not on the needle, but actually on the edge of the bag so it touches the elastic band. That way when I get all the way around the bag, the two lines will meet up. So let's get that done. going through lovely. And I've got a pin, I did put a pin uh, at the bottom of the edge of the second opening and I'm totally in line with it. So that's all good news. It's just a, a, another way of just double checking everything's going nicely. So I've done that, and we'll just keep going. Um, I have actually got a different colour thread in my bobbin to what I have on the reel of thread on the top because I've got a very light fabric inside and I didn't want the dark thread showing up on it. And there 
There we go. Perfect. Just sewing the end in for me. And cut the thread. And I'm hoping that you can now see the two rows of stitching, one here and one here. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do the bottom edge of the bag, okay? We're going to keep the bag right side out. We're going to do a French seam on it. Now, what I like to do is actually to make sure uh, that the bottom edge is nice and straight. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to just use two or three pins, making sure I've got the side seams at the side and not rolled around at all. And I'm just going to pop in two or three pins just to make sure that the top edge of the bag is level. There we go. Okay. So there we go. Now you can actually feel that the lining is not pleated or tucked in any way. I want that to remain nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to give it another little press, just to encourage any little ripples that may be in the fabric towards the bottom. So I'm just pressing it from the top down. Okay. So I'm just gonna flip this over. And I'm just going to tidy that bottom edge up. Um, once again, what I'm doing, I'm leveling the top of the bag uh, along one of the marked lines on my cutting board to make sure I've got it nice and straight. And then I'm going to just take um, a very small amount of fabric off of the bottom to make sure it's straight making sure that I've got one of the lines on my ruler to the edge of the bag so that we get a nice 90 degree angle. And that's looking very good. There we go. So what we need to do now is to actually sew along the bottom edge and we're going to use, you can use a quarter of an inch seam. If you use a quarter of an inch seam, you will need to cut it up a little bit because we don't want too much bulk when we make the French seam. Or you can do a scant quarter of an inch, okay? So I'm going to do a scant quarter of an inch, which hopefully will mean I won't need to cut that back, all right? So I'm just gonna take it to the sewing machine and then go sew straight along the bottom. Again, if you want, oh, it might help if I have my, I can put my table back on now. If I remove the elastic band. There we go. And if you want to just use your donkey or your thread saver, just to make sure everything's up and running before actually we go on to the piece of work. And all we're going to do now is just Leave that on there. And if you want to go forwards and backwards just to secure the end, that's absolutely fine. Just keep going. And for those of you that want to start using donkeys, it's, it's quite good to have just a few of these. So you've got a little pot and you can use them at the beginning and the end. And that saves pulling out all the thread from the bobbin and on the top. And that will save you a good 10, 12 inches every single time and reduce the risk of spaghetti going on. Okay. So we've now sewn all the way across the bottom. So what we need to do now is to turn it through so we've got the wrong side out. 
So I just removed the pins that I put at the top to make sure we had it nice and straight. And we're just going to turn that through. Like so. I'm just going to turn this over. I do like to give it a little bit of a press just to make sure I've got nice crisp edges. And I'm just going to just pop this inside just to push the corners out. If you've taken and done quite a, a wide seam, I would encourage you to actually just nip those corners off to, to reduce the bulk. But I've done quite a narrow seam, so it actually doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to encourage the sewn seam right to the edge there, like so. I'm just going to make sure that the fabric's smooth inside and I've got no ripples because I don't want a pleat in it when I turn it back through. And as you can see here, this is the central seam, that we, which is why we turned the lining fabric around a little. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a little press. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew a generous quarter of an inch all the way across here. And by doing this, it's going to enclose that bottom seam, which will give you a very strong French seam. If you don't do your seam wide enough, this is when you might get stray fibers or threads coming through, which is why I'm saying you need to either trim it back or do a scant quarter of an inch to start with. This seam is the generous quarter of an inch, okay? So I just pull my donkey through. Like so, and here we go. So this is a generous, and you can actually feel the seam that's already in there. So you can take your speed down, um, if you feel much more comfortable doing that, that's fine. Now you will see, see a dark stitch because I've got, the, I haven't bothered to change the thread uh, whilst we're doing this. You will see a dark thread on the top of this one. And I'm actually going to reverse to make sure that I've got that right on the edge there. And I'm giving it a nice generous quarter of an inch all the way along. And I'm just going to reverse stitch on this end just to make sure that that's all good as well. So you can see here, this is now the inside of the back. You have no raw edges. So all we need to do now is to turn, oh, I'm just going to nip that little thread off there. I'm just going to turn this through. push those corners out and we are almost there. Just give it a quick press. Right, so all that remains to uh, be done to it now is actually to thread your ribbon or cord through the channels. Now what we're going to do, we're going to thread the first ribbon from this side all the way round and come back out this side. The second one will be threaded from the opposite side all the way around. So I'll just thread the first one through and they go through really easy. All I've done is actually put um, a little safety pin. If you haven't got a bodkin, just use a safety pin or you can use a, a, a paper clip, a hair clip, anything like that. Um, if you wanted to use a much wider ribbon, 
just make the channel a little bit bigger. Instead of having three quarters of an inch, actually make it an inch, that's fine. If you make a big Santa sack, you know, you, you definitely would want it to be um, a wider one, uh, which is what I, I generally do mine, the Santa sacks, so I usually do the channel about an inch and a half um, and use a three quarters or an inch ribbon um, because they do need to be a little bit more substantial. Um, but they're great fun to make um, and also if you do want to do them for birthdays or Christmas you can customise them as well you, you know if you've got um, a, a son that might be interested in trains or a daughter that likes ponies or something you could do a plique with their names on um, and also if you if you gift um, toiletries or craft things to somebody and give them in this rather than wrap them up they've got a secondary present as well which is actually very personal and very nice to receive. Um, my daughters have always enjoyed this sort of thing, so that's all good. And we're nearly all the way around the first time. So we'll just take this through. Like I say, these, these make up in no time at all. Um, and you, like I say, you can customise the fabrics, the designs, they're brilliant to put your hair bits and bobs in when you're staying over in hotels for the weekend or anything. So that's the first one gone through. So all re that remains to be done to that one is just to literally knot it off. Like so and then just trim your tails. Okay, so that's the first one done. All you need to do then is the other one starting at the opposite side. This is the one I made earlier. So you can see this is the first ribbon, this is the second ribbon, and this is what happens when you pull it. So there we go. That's the tutorial on how to make a drawstring bag. Um, look out for your emails if you are subscribed to the Bramble Patch. Thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.